I'm Cindy. Welcome to Pearls of Liberty, January 14th, 2012. One significant event this week was the New Hampshire primaries. And Ron Paul did quite well. Yeah, he came in second and that was actually probably, he probably did better than was reported and uh, I still don't really trust the, the, the polling numbers and the reporting, but that was good because in the, in the eyes of the people in the general media, he's a serious candidate. In fact, he came out and said, okay, it's really a two-man race, so let's boil it down to Mitt Romney and Ron Paul. And still, what does the media report, the mainstream media? Mitt Romney won New Hampshire. Number two is not even mentioned. So it's very interesting, and it's really as much a battle of the media format uh, or the battle of who's listening to what as it is between the candidates themselves and of course the, the message is very different and I completely agree that Romney is really just the white Obama and just as Obama was the black Bush so it's uh, really unfortunate that that it's so there's so little choice and it's so easy to say, yeah, his policies are basically the same, but of course I'll point out again that Romney was the one that really helped write Obamacare because that's the plan that he used for Massachusetts. So people that think that that's a good thing, well, he's your man. The danger of going with uh, any GP, G, a GOP candidate other than Ron Paul is simply that it will take a whole nother three, two, two or three years to wake up the people that think that they got their man in there and that things are going to change. We know that if Romney gets in there, things are not going to change. So, support Ron Paul. Don and I had an interesting experience this week. We went to a meeting, a, a, it's a planning meeting, a kind of a tentative meeting that's supposedly set up to find out how San Francisco Bay Area people feel about their new, uh, the new proposed transit systems and the, the housing that goes along with that. It actually is cloaked as that, but what, it, what these meetings really are, are an effort to have people, trick people more or less, into approving of Agenda 21 dictates that are being handed down. And uh, so we attended this meeting visioning meetings, that's what they've been called. It's uh, ABAG, which is the Association of Bay Area Governments, which we already have a little bad taste for in our mouths because on uh, certain dates we're not allowed to burn our fireplace because if there's bad, if there's air that has a high content of pollutants in a county that's maybe 50 miles from here, we are not allowed to burn our fireplace because we are in a bag. So we attended this meeting and uh, it, was, it was exciting, to say the least. Mm -hmm. We are in a bag of, you know what, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> they, what's going on is this is regional government. This is the power of regional government. And there's something in the human psyche that says, if there's a, somebody that claims to have authority over me and they're dressed nice and they talk w smoothly and they give a good presentation, well, then they're the authority and I defer to them because I don't want to be a rebel. And that's exactly what you have going on here. But what's really happening is the, the lawful, rightful government is being co-opted. County government and state government are where the, the real power is. But what's happened is ever since Ronald Reagan introduced this concept in California anyway, and it's happened of course across the nation, you have much more power resting in unelected regional government that claims to be trying to help the counties do their job, but what they're really doing is they're forcing down a directive given to them from their higher ups, which is in this case the United Nations, which is really where the Agenda 21 stuff is all coming in. So this meeting was very interesting because we had a group of people that were outside protesting with signs, etc., saying this is a fake meeting until 
they realized how bad that would be not to let this group of citizens in, so they let us in, and then they managed us with their management techniques and steered us into giving them the approval that they needed. Nevertheless, they, they easily knew that we weren't buying into their agenda by the questions we raised, but they cut off the question periods as quickly as possible and st steered the uh, questions into a room in which the people would really not have any impact. So in order to have any impact, you had to go away from the room where they wanted to answer your questions, which really were not serious answers anyway. Uh, it's, it's hard to... It's, like, it, it's completely a rigged game, and we had people walking around that had signs saying this is a rigged meeting. That's exactly what it was. It was a rigged meeting. The cops were even called because one person was actually somebody that was protesting the meeting was kicked, assaulted really, by somebody that was in the meeting and that ended up causing the police to be called and the person who was protesting to be escorted out. And the friendly people that are running this ABAG meeting fronting for Agenda 21, United Nations Agenda 21 said the next time they would call the police quicker. So it's easy to see that these are just Birkenstock wearing thugs is all they are. And that was an, an interesting experience to go to and find out how they operate because they are very smooth. They have thought of everything and they do steer you according to their agenda. If I had it to do over again, I'd do certain things like uh, have some really well phrased questions under uh, that exposing that they're their steering methods by asking things like, well, these are our tax dollars. Why are they not approved of at the county level in every county? Why is there this transportation district that manages all this stuff? If we were going to make changes, yeah, let's, let's change the whole accounting structure because it's all wrong, and let's put our money into fixing roads and potholes, and I wouldn't buy into their dividing it up into these three different categories. I'd put all of my chips for voting into the fix the roads and potholes thing. So they, they minimize your, your impact and steer you in the direction that they want you to go in a very skillful way. One of the things that I found myself when I was wrestled in trying to give alternative uh, answers, so they give you cards if you don't like any of their choices and trying to fill out what I would want to do instead, is that I realized that it's very hard to come up with a non-statist answer, meaning how are you going to tell people that, you know, how am I going to come up with a solution that doesn't require a big bureaucracy? Really, there isn't any. So you're, you're in the trap by even answering the question. So there is no choice that just says, well, let's just let the the roads take care of the roads and, and the, our tax money do that and just the not have this big pool of money that we have to figure out what to deal with. Let's just let these different systems maintain themselves and if they don't maintain themselves then let's not rob people's money. That choice just isn't there. It was, in many respects, it was a very interesting evening and I, although I can't say it was fun, I'm glad that we went. The confrontation that Don mentioned uh, that was there was an altercation supposedly where a man uh, kicked a woman or touched her with his foot or something and they were had been having an argument I I was actually wondering if that had been staged though the, if the whole thing was staged because people who we knew who were there um, to protest didn't know either the man or the woman so it's, it's interesting to see how these people work. They really are not above, and we know this from watching the nightly news or watching Fox, they're not above outright lies, they're not above staging something false to prove their point. Uh, all you have to do to realize that is look at all the false flag terror attacks. Uh, they will do anything to get their way. And one, if, you, if you're having any type of these these meetings in your area you're thinking about going I think that something that's effective is as Don said to communicate well 
have questions prepared. I think that it's possible you might you might wake up a few zombies there if if you if you could play your cards right. Because I noticed some people in the crowd who weren't with the groups that we were with were pondering about some of these things and beginning to ask some questions that that were raising the real questions that any any citizen, I hate to use that word, but it's appropriate, would ask under these kind of circumstances that, yeah, wait a minute, uh, these aren't the only alternatives, these aren't the only solutions, can we think out of the box? And to identify the real culprits, in this case, energy is a real concern, and that's one of the things they're harping on, and of course, uh, greenhouse gases. So if you can phrase questions in a way that that can help people who really are concerned about the environment realize CO2 is not the enemy. The real enemy is big oil as far as energy is concerned. Uh, I, I think there's potential there to wake some people up. And one of the great things about this evening, probably the best thing, was that we saw a coalition in action uh, that, was, that consisted of uh, Democrats against opposed to Agenda 21 was, you know, it's very liberal uh, people who we find we have a lot in common with because they're liberty fighters. Uh, there were there was the um, a Tea Party group, and there was also a group that was the Eagle Forum, the uh, Phyllis Schlafly's ladies, and uh, I as far as ideologies, these groups. Yeah, pretty far apart in many respects, but we all were able to pull together for a common cause, and that is beautiful. The common cause is liberty. That's what Ron Paul is all about. Hey, people, if you don't have liberty, you can't follow your dreams. So let's get the liberty thing happening first, and then if people want to, you know, have causes, fine. But the the main cause really and truly is liberty, and it was it was good to see a group of people who could come together under that, the auspices of that and agree together. But if you agree to have liberty, then you can't say, the state has to do this for me and the state has to take up this agenda. You know what that does? That means that you have to actually persuade people from their own free will and you don't get to have the state being the muscle man that's going to enforce the rules by which you think people ought to live. So. It's a little bit harder that way because it actually respects human free will the same way that God respects us and allows us to make our own choices. Good point. Another issue that Don wanted to discuss, uh, which is of course important, not that I don't want to discuss it, I just haven't studied it as, as deeply as he has, is what's happening in Iran this week, and I'm probably not studying it because I would like to live in a little bit of denial. Uh, there are three warships there. That is correct, and uh, that is what I remember uh, someone with some significant intelligence background and military background, Joe Skousen, saying at the end of last year was that uh, we would know that when there was three aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf, and I believe that's what they are. I'm, I'm not sure if all three are aircraft carriers. Maybe not. Maybe we just have three warships. I think that's probably the case. Anyway, things are ramping up pretty quickly. Um, it's not like it's going to happen tomorrow, but it's looking more and more inevitable, this, this war, that could escalate into something much bigger than a regional conflict. And it's pretty discouraging to see it happen. The the experts had been saying that Iran didn't have enough enriched uranium or enriched at a, at a high enough level to be able to make a nuclear bomb. Now they're saying they do. I'm wondering, are these uh, International Atomic Energy Commission people simply paid to say whatever the powers that be want them to say? I think that's a, a possibility. And uh, I'm not personally sure if Iran is really all that close to having nuclear weapons, but if the powers that be say that they are, well, that can justify a war. And as we know, the Rand Corporation and other think tanks are on record as saying that what the economy needs is a World War III. Well, what that's really all about is a restructuring of society to take us into a new level of uh, 
servitude and more control for the state and that's that's what the elites have done throughout history is organize wars behind the scenes so that they can get greater power over people by giving greater control to the government which never quite gets back to the way it was before the war so that is what's happening we will see how seriously things develop and it's uh, it is escalating rapidly and those war drums are being beaten pretty loudly the ndaa was signed into law and there is another threat to citizens in the enemy expatriation act which is being introduced in the house as hr 3166 and at first when we were talking about this we said yeah we Cool. They throw us out. We don't. We don't know the IRS anymore. But that's probably really not the way it would work. I'm sure it would not be beneficial. But this is this is another blow against liberty in this country. Yeah, this Enemy Expatriation Act is something which they can say without due process of law that you are no longer an American citizen. That, that is that blatant of a law that is now in Congress now being considered as if the NDAA wasn't enough in itself. They're saying, well, what do we do if, if we detain them? Well, what action can we take again against them? If uh, we want to set them free and not clog up our jails, oh, that's it, we'll just say that you're not citizens anymore. And that, seriously, is what they're doing. It's just mind-boggling. But one point I want to make real clearly is that just because they pass laws doesn't mean the laws are right or good. Everything that Hitler did was legal. They had passed all the laws and people f followed all the laws like like good little Germans. One of the most encouraging things to to me about attending the meeting that we just talked about up in Santa Rosa about the uh, the ABAG Agenda 21 stuff was one of the the people behind uh, Democrats for Agenda 21 said we refuse to be good little Germans, and that's what this is all about. Not that Germans are bad people, but what we're talking about is that mentality that allowed Hitler to rise to power, to have mass sway over people. We have to really get behind mm -hmm. the essence of America being individual liberty, individual freedom, and that's what, that's what we need to get back to. That's what's the, the answer to this stuff that's being foisted upon us. So we're going to have some serious civil disobedience if they're trying to come up with reasons to exercise tyranny saying that it's legal. It's not legal. It's just as, as if you're saying a black man is not a person. Well, that doesn't make it so just because you've got a law that says it's so. So we have to get in the mindset of it's our individual liberty given to us from God that can't be violated. These are unalienable rights and this is what America is founded on. We need to be more solid in that than ever as these things come down. There have been rulings throughout even America's history as uh, Stuart Rhodes outlined brilliantly uh, on, as a guest on Alex Jones this past week about how there have been overturnings of these fake laws that try to take rights of people away, saying that they are unconstitutional, and they are. And the, the, what's, so what's happening now actually happened right when at different periods of time in American history, the Civil War, the Great Depression, when there was a, a federal power grab, those were, that power grab was later ruled unconstitutional. But saying that, I don't say that you have to wait for the Supreme Court or even expect that the Supreme Court is going to provide the solution or provide the answer. You have to stand up for it. You are, as an individual, are the one that needs to say in your heart, this is the free, a freedom that I have from God. It can't be violated. And we haven't talked, as far as I can remember, a whole lot about SOPA, the internet, the, the bill that will threaten, uh, that does threaten internet freedom. That is a valid concern. My email box is filled with requests from different groups asking me to send letters, send emails, 
and uh, Black Sopa. But someone was on Alex Jones's broadcast this week who stated that he's he helped to work on the new system for domain name registration, and he believes that Sopa is actually a bait and switch issue. That the, the real problem is not Sopa. That something is going on behind the scenes that is much more of a threat than SOPA. Yeah, what that actually is, is that the, they're considering adding other domain name suffixes, like you, right now we have .net, .com, .biz, .tv, and those are the highest level domain name suffixes that are out there, and they have to be approved to do others. The thing about the, the way it is now, there's a cap, meaning a pricing cap, on all of those domain names that we have now. Fifteen bucks across the board, and, and there's some little, little bit of variation, but it's not that significant. But these new ones that are under consideration are not going to have a cap. And what this caller said was that he could foresee that the that once they open the door towards having a domain name suffix without having a cap on it, then the others that are already in the game would say, wait a minute, let's be fair, we need to be able to increase our price too for the people that are using more bandwidth, etc. and they'll give a logical seeming reason. And then what's going to happen is as soon as you've got no pricing cap, well, right now you have a very level playing field because anybody can get into the game. But as soon as you start having no pricing cap, what happens is maybe you can get in the game uh, for uh, some limited bandwidth, but as soon as your bandwidth starts increasing, as soon as you have, begin to have a significant effect, well, then you're paying a lot more. And you know, quickly, you have winnowed the field to anybody that it pays any attention to that is somebody that has a whole bunch of money which is the situation that we have with the mainstream media. So I could easily see how this, is, this guy is right, and they're trying to steer the new media into the old media paradigm so that it's controlled by the big money. So be uh, aware of that, be on the alert for that, and whatever you can, don't let it happen. Insist on the domain name registration being kept at a, a low, very low cost. Sure, and if you're familiar at all, if you've ever tried to buy a domain name, you, you know that some are unavailable, some are for sale for a much higher rate. That's because a person or a company has already bought that domain name and they're offering it for sale. But for instance, for us, pearlsofliberty.com, we got that for something like fourteen ninety eight a year through the, the domain name place that we happen to use, Domain Discover. And uh, it, it will be the same cost for us year after year. Now, if we sold it to somebody, we could sell it for whatever we wanted. But as long as we keep it and maintain it, we don't, the, the rate doesn't go up. It might go up a dollar every once in a while. Nothing significant, though. So that's what Don is referring to. And if you, if you have a domain name, this is, of course, a, of interest to you. And we need to do all that we can to protect our internet freedom and uh, to help determine how the internet works. And one way is um, by letting PayPal know that you have concerns about whether you will actually be paid. Yesterday we received an email stating that Sheriff Mack had a conference planned for liberty-minded sheriffs and he had been receiving donations from PayPal, there were $40,000 in donations that had been given toward this conference in, in PayPal. And PayPal is refusing to allow these funds to be available to Sheriff Mack and the, and the sheriffs. So this is without precedent, as far as I know. Essentially, this is a financial institution just randomly making a call, we're not going to give you your money because we, we're not sure that you should have it. P 
people donated money through PayPal to Sheriff Mac and PayPal is not giving him the money. It's outrageous that, and, and uh, for people that don't know what Sheriff Mack is doing, he is informing county sheriffs nationwide that they are the chief law enforcement officer in their area with the power to tell the federal government that they cannot enter the county. And he does it with uh, a great deal of background and a great deal of finesse and understanding and he's totally knows what he's talking about because this is the the, sh the man the sheriff that actually took the Brady bill to the Supreme Court and won and overturned the the Brady bill that would have turned local sheriffs into federal agents so he understands very clearly exactly precisely where the the conflict of power is happening and the knows that the true lawful constitutional power resides in the county sheriff he wrote the book the the county sheriff america's last best hope or or something to that effect and it's so outrageous that paypal would simply refuse to give this money that was donated for the purpose of bringing sheriffs to a conference to inform them about their true lawful responsibility to protect the rights of Americans. And we are feeling rather cautious about banking in general. The reality is there are any number of reasons why a bank can justify freezing your account, and certainly a, a tax issue is the, one of the most common ones. In, now, in this case, it should be stated, there, there was no issue. There's no, no IRS. They said they were concerned that he might have IRS issues at some future point. But the IRS was not asking PayPal to freeze this, this money. They just did it on their own. So when you look at the history of banking, we tend to feel safe because of FDIC. The reality is the government can tell a bank any reason. The IRS can, can easily freeze funds. And I understand there used to be a court process that was required before they did it. Now it's, it's, a, it's a fax or phone call to a bank. And we actually went through this a couple of years ago. Some funds were frozen. As it turned out, uh, was this would happen to be the state tax, not not board, not the IRS. As it turned out, they actually owed us a bit of money, but it, where we were in the process, it appeared that we owed them money. So they froze our checking account. We had checks out there. They unfroze it because our accountant made some calls and and impacted their process and and it was determined that we did not owe them money. In the meantime, we had $400 worth of bounced checks and bank charges, and I understand that can, be, that can be taken off, but by the time we completed the process we needed to go through, the window of time had expired for that. So we, we lost $400. We had done nothing wrong. My point is, although I'm taking some time to get to it, uh, Consider where your money is. If you have your money in the system, we've talked about this before with Gerald Salente losing his investment money. And it appears this week that MF Global is, is really not going to be refunding some of that money, I heard. So that they, the first warrant then were, now the word on the street is that they're not going to. Your funds may not be completely safe in your corner bank. Under the mattress is looking pretty good these days. <laughs> it is, or if you if you have the means, an offshore account, and you know we know some people are holding dinar, and if the dinar revalues and you're holding some, uh, think very carefully about about what you do with it. Uh, I mean that's not financial professional financial advice or legal advice. Uh, get a good financial advisor or look up a couple of websites that we'll include in the, in our comments under the video. So 
We will move on to Pearl Culture. We saw some good films this week. And uh, one of the ones I enjoyed the most was Bliss. It's about a Turkish Muslim woman who uh, gets set free from the system that she's in. Gotta love that. It's a beautiful film because of um, all the scenery it also. And, but but the, just the dynamics of personal liberty and freedom that this woman is going through were excellent. You get a real picture of what the, the Muslim culture is like and, and how a woman can be shamed and um, actually after being abused by the people that are shaming her. It's really quite two-faced, deceitful, diabolical what men can do to women in that culture. But it's not really a film that tries to paint this horrible picture about Muslims because you see the universal desire for for freedom of being who you were created to be is victorious over all of that in spite of the opposition and uh, it's uh, it's a, an up movie because of that it, the things get worked out the hearts of good people are directed in the right ways and it's a, obviously it's not a Hollywood film it does have subtitles but it's very enjoyable to give you a different view of the world and one in which you'll see that people are people and they love freedom. And we watched Kill the Irishman which was <laughs> violent and bloody uh, essentially a film about um, a mafia war, even though they weren't all Italian, as you might guess from the title, but it was a, an interesting film historically, a true story. Yeah, I thought it was well worth watching. This is based on a true story of a man that they called the Irishman, who was Danny Green in Cleveland in the 1970s played by an actor who did a great job that actually looks a lot like the, the real Danny Green. And yeah, there were a lot of explosions and some uh, really explicit violence, but it's all within the context of, yeah, this is probably pretty close to the way it really was. And the amazing thing about it was is that this is how the Mafia lost a lot of its power in America because what actually happened is that the is a war between the Italians and the Irish in Cleveland and the Italians couldn't take out this guy everything kept failing and not working and and uh, you know there's some indication that God might be protecting him because he, he had uh, come to some however <laughs> interesting point of, uh, of faith in war across around his neck, etc. Not, not vouching for this guy's Christianity at all, but, but the interesting thing about the way that he was wired uh, is that he would just, this thing would come in his spirit and he would say, no, it's not going to be that way, and he would just uh, set himself on a course to not let it be so. And, uh, and that's powerful when a human decides to do that. I'm not condoning the violent ways in which he acted that out, but the, 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 there was something good about his spirit. And what actually ended up happening was that mob, uh, Italian mafia, had to come from outside areas of the Cleveland area, New York and, and other places, in order to take this guy out. They did kill him, and what ends up happening is that in the investigations of that that killing the other mobs were exposed and shut down so it it had a very interesting historical ending and it doesn't necessarily mean that the mob completely disappeared but it became less powerful after that sure and it is a true story so Don didn't give you any spoiler that wasn't uh, in the newspapers yeah. <laughs> at the time. And you, you, if you grew up around the Cleveland area, you probably re even remember uh, newspaper stories about this guy. So very, it was a very interesting film, a little violent for my taste. Uh, this week, a film that I saw that Don didn't, 
uh, I thought it might be a chick flick, so I watched it without him. Turns out not really a chick flick entirely, but it's called The Walker, and it's a story uh, about a male. He's not really a gigolo. He's he's just um, he he's he's an attendant kind of. He takes wealthy women to Washington D.C. parties, and he's in on all the gossip and. It's an interesting movie from a liberty perspective because the evil that's behind the scenes seems like it's really quite accurate and lines up with, with some things that we've, that we've heard. And one of the lines that was the most significant, I thought, was they're talking about scandal. And one of the characters says it's... Uh, people say it's all about sex. It's really not all about sex. It's all about money. But as Don said in Washington, it's all about power. But it's clear that the money is a bridge to the power. And um, I thought it was an interesting film. And were there some good Tomlin. actors in that? Yes, there were. It's uh, Lily Tomlin and Kristen Scott Thomas. And Lauren Bacall makes an appearance. Hmm. And the... Uh, the Walker is Woody Harrelson, and he has been in some Liberty movies, and he's kind of known as somebody who's, I don't know if he's right in the middle of the, the truth movement, but he's at least on the edges. So it, it seemed to me that these people had insight into the this, this story, and, and uh, it seemed like this film was kind of a, a labor of love. So I recommend it. And we watched Ride with the Devil, which was a Civil War film. It's interesting because it takes place in Missouri, which is a slave state that, that sided with the North. And all of the, the, the warfare really is just local power struggles between the different factions. And you have people deciding what they're going to do with families that were kind of at each other or, or whatever. but. Um, it, it gives you a very realistic picture of that era and, and the real lives that people were involved in and the sides that they had to take. And, um, it, it is kind of a slow-moving movie by, by most standards today, but it feels historically accurate. Some of the reviews I read said that they felt that it was, and uh, the, the acting is good. Uh, Jewel plays a woman in it, does a good acting job, and uh, the guy that played Spider-Man, Toby, Toby McGuire. McGuire, he's, uh, he's in it, and it's a, I think it's worth watching if you just want to get a, another perspective on the Civil War that maybe you hadn't quite had before. I, it was made several years before Cold Mountain, and it, it ha kind of has that feeling to it a little bit, that uh, just the it's the Civil War from behind the scenes, looking at the Civil War through uh, individual lives. So it's helpful in understanding history. And hopefully we won't have to go through a Civil War in our lifetimes or in our children's or grandchildren's or into the future. We're hoping that what the, the, the changes that are coming will be permanent sweeping changes uh, that can truly bring an end to war. That's, that's what we would really like to see. So, thanks for watching Pearls of Liberty this week. And do you have any parting thoughts? Use the internet while you've got it. It's the, the real source of real truth and communication and don't believe the stuff you're being spoon-fed from the dying corporate media.